Welcome to W050 Podcast, Women Over 50 Embody Wisdom and Wellness. I sure hope we do because today our topic is Be Your Own Superhero, Awaken to the Power Within. My name is Corinne and I'm here with my BFF, Eddie. And this was like so much fun. I think it was a little longer today that we talked. It was because we were we were talking about our superpowers, our experiences, some things that have happened, you know. Yeah. How do you become your own superhero from being helpless and hopeless in certain situations in your life? How do you awaken that power within to become a superhero? And what makes a superhero? And how to find your own, yeah, just how to find your own. You get it, some tastes of what Eddie and I have gone through in our lives. And some different techniques. We give you some techniques, um, some things that have worked for us. And uh, yeah, and hopefully you'll find something in here and enjoy it as yeah, much as she, we enjoyed it. And she quoted Buddha a lot. There's a lot of I the did. There's, parables, there's so some parables in there. <laughs> Hello. Uh, hi. Oh my hi. gosh, it's been so long. It has. It feels like ages. Like text is so different than than actually. It is seeing... texting. We did we did talk on the phone at least once, mm -hmm. but we haven't like seen each other on like FaceTime, Zoom. It's no. it's been it's been so very very long. I know you've been doing retreats and I've been skiing and mm -hmm. doing self retreats. <laughs> mm -hmm. we've yes, been, we've been very active. Yep. Sure. Yep. We've been active for sure. So we've got some stuff to discuss and we have a great topic today. Our, and so um, um, before we get into our topic, let's talk a little bit about what we've been doing the last couple of weeks. So mm -hmm. how was your ski trip out West? It was amazing. We skied in Lake Louise, which is out in Alberta, Canada, a, an amazing mountain. And, you know, had, well, Colleen, we happened to be there at the same time and we had My some roommate. great skiing and she's amazing she's like uh, such a good friend I was so glad she was on the ski run with me because at the very first day um yeah because I had a moment you know and and patients say to me do you ever get anxious like you have so many tools now like you know I'm like oh yeah yeah and I shared the story of you know, last year I'd injured myself and this year, the first run, we jumped off to go down a blue run, but it was a drop immediately. But my, my mind just went somewhere else and I froze, you know, and it's almost like it's a, not a panic attack, but it's a, a freeze moment. And everyone else we were skiing with, you know, my honey and his son and his, his son's girlfriend, they all were ahead. So I was like, I'm just going to take my skis off. And I think my ski days are over. And then Colleen comes scooting along and scoots up by me. And she goes, are you good? And I'm like, no, I'm frozen. I'm frozen. Not cold frozen because I'm dressed in great ski gear. But I'm, I'm having a moment where I don't think I can do this. And she goes, oh, yes, you can. Eddie, get out of your head. Now you're in your head. You're in your thinking mind. I'm like, okay. And bless her heart, she's like, just follow me, just do this, and just don't think, just just look at what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to stop and do this. And my dear, within 10, 20 minutes, and for the rest of the week, I was skiing like a pro. It was awesome. So it was like getting over that fear, embracing it, and tapping into the, you know, the superpowers within, and that guidance that was there, you know, it's just, we just got to trust and, and, yeah. there and push through it. Like when she described, cause I think I heard about it from her first before you and mm -hmm. what she described it, I, when she described what happened that everybody went ahead, I, I could, argue, cause you've had that happen now, like the, in the kayak, when mm -hmm. you were doing that sea kayak thing and the teacher and Strat were way ahead of you and you felt like you were going to drown. That was like four years ago or well, something yeah, like that. It was like really rough seas and the yeah. waves came up and I hadn't been taught to rescue myself at this point. Yeah. In the kayak, but I pushed through it. Right. Yeah. And of course they got and, a lecture after. <laughs> and sometimes on the, on the sailboat. And I just, I could feel that it's just, it's like the cellular memory comes up with, with all mm. of us with these different things. And, and in the moment, it's like a physical thing. You can't like talk yourself out of it, but you, 
you took a moment and luckily you probably could have gone, could have gotten out of it yourself, but it was helpful to have somebody else there and just breathe with it and be patient and kind to yourself mm -hmm. and sit with it for a moment, give yourself a breather. And it is, it is a perfect way to kind of get into our topic today, because that is, I think what becoming the super hero within is all about mm -hmm. is that being a soup your own superhero and tapping into that power that we all have within to it within us isn't about not having difficult moments it, it's all about having difficult moments yeah. that's what it is that's because that's life mm -hmm. we are very fragile beings we we can get hurt quite easily and we you know and and fear is a, a bit very much part of our existence as to to for us to be safe yes then there's, come, there's many levels of fear you know yeah. you have people you know when you look at at skiing and you're looking at skiing at you know in even in your 60s right so it's it there's different fears there's fears of falling or fears of being hit by a, a snowboard or or the kids that are going really fast or taking the wrong turn or you know, twerking your leg or your hip or there's but those things never come into your head because the way I ski now, after I got through the first, the painful event, you know, that freezing moment, the rest of the time skiing was just look at the mountain, you know, like, like I remember Colleen, she looks at me and she goes, just look at where we are. Just look at the mountain, just look at the snow. And it's, it's the intrusive thoughts that come in, but then you get this distraction of you've got the mountains and everything that's going on around you that takes you kind of softens that because if, we don't have that, yes, it's within ourselves, but often we can make a decision because, you know, Colleen has her superpowers or you have yours. I could have in that moment, yes, gotten through it and pushed through it myself, and, or I would have taken my skis off and went up the top of the hill, took the gondola down and said, my ski days are over, right? Could have happened. Could have happened. No sense of even talking about that. Yeah, because right? it didn't. Because it didn't. Yeah. And now it's like, wow, do I ever feel empowered? Yeah. And wow, did it ever boost my confidence? So it doesn't matter what anyone else says, whether it's, oh, you chicken shit. But you, you did, you could have done that. You were, you know, whatever anyone else is saying, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's where you are or where I was in that moment with it. Yeah. Being authentic to where you are. And then, you know, knowing the stories, you know, so, so knowing you to find the superpower within, I mean, we have everything within, we have the angels and the demons within us, right? So yes. you had both going, go, Absolutely. you know, you had both there, like the demon part was the part that were froze because of past experiences, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And then the hero part of you was the one that was able to get up and push through it and move through the discomfort. And so we have both of those and it is a lot, there's, there's some, definitely some tools that we have um, in that tool that Colleen said, she said, get out of your head and look at where we are. And that whenever we're present in the moment, we take a breath and we, who would I be without that thought? That's always a good question. Or especially when you're in a magnificent situation, you don't even have to have that thought. Who would I be? It was just like, right. look at where we are. And it's that sense of awe that we talked about months ago it takes your breath away and then there you are there's there you just take a deep breath and ski on well and it surprised me like even to i was so excited about all of us skiing i was like oh this is going to be great it surprised me that that feeling came in it happened yeah that it happened that i was just going to jump off the chair and scoot on right behind everybody and something clicked right and that's that's those times in our lives where we tap deeper, we tap within to go, hmm, that self-inquiry that we start to do, not the beating up of ourselves. Yeah. Not feeding the fears. I love the saying, don't feed the fears. Yeah. Don't you know? feed the bears either. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> bears are the fears. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. That's great. That's yeah. yeah. So it's a good story. So I went, you know what, I'm going to share that because it happened and it is, it was authentic and it's real. And yeah, I, I really grew from, from that. And I, I skied some of my best skiing of my life. Mm. You know, I started skiing when I was 19 and, uh, but 
I really enjoyed it. Like I really enjoyed it, especially on the last day. And and um, I think Colleen was really thankful because she had done a lot of diamond runs. So she was thankful to do some blue runs, right? And I'm going, okay, you don't mind? And I'm like, no, she doesn't. She no, doesn't she thoroughly enjoys. This. She loves all of it. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and, and the mountains are incredible. The mountains just fill you up, even if you just stop and just do nothing all day, but look at them and mm -hmm. sit in them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. when you texted me yesterday, we didn't even know what we were going to talk about this, or I don't know if you planned on, but I did want to hear you texted me yesterday um, in the middle of the day, because we, we usually try to get with each other about the topic we're going to be doing. And you came up, we shared this topic. How about be your own superhero? And I was like, yes, I love, it's like one of my favorite topics is something I talk about with my clients all the time. And, um, and it, did it just sort of pop into your head or was there anything that happened? No, it just, it just came in. I've been reading a lot of stuff and, and listening to different things and, and working on music and just, just feeling really good. And it just came into my head. I, yeah. I was just like, I wasn't even doing anything. I was just going, okay, we got our podcast to do now tomorrow. And what would be a really good topic? We touch on so many things and we're going to tap it in within ourselves. Like maybe, ah, maybe being our own hero, being our own superhero unit, being our own superhero, right? And that, then I texted to you. And before I texted it, I went, I don't know, is Corinne going to like this? Because she just did an amazing retreat <laughs> with Alea. So, yeah, I think she's going to like this because it just came in. And then yeah, you well, that's how I, you know, you, you and I love to do things like that. And, and in the, the and I love, I just love to hear how, you know, you've been reading certain things and it just kind of came to you spontaneously, which is where creativity comes from. Like inspire in spirit, inspire spirit, aspire comes air, you know, space, air, inspiration, creativity comes from space of allowing things in. So when we're not thinking all the time, when we're giving ourselves space, when we're skiing or when we're you know, in the shower, taking a walk, that's when uh, inspiration and creativity can come in. And there's a whole mythology around. I sent you, and I'm definitely going to link this movie below. It's free on YouTube. It's called Finding Joe. And it, and the hero's journey is those of you who went to university uh, or college um, studied Joseph Campbell. And Joseph Campbell was the foremost a uh, philosopher and um, uh, it, he studied, uh, he, he was around in like the 50s and 60s and he was a professor and he started studying with uh, Native American cultures and studied all the mythology and all the archetypes and all the stories of yeah. all the different cult cultures, Arthur's Round Table, Greek mythology, you know, Buddhism, like all of it. He studied all of it. And he found the, he found the story within the story. And it's kind of part of our culture now. So you've he heard the hero's journey before, but it was coined by Joseph Campbell. And there's the movie called Finding Joe is about, you know, this and the, but Joseph Campbell's not in it because he's passed away now, but there's some really great, you know, your Robbie Sharman's in there, Deepak Chopra's in there, some really great people. And I've, I see it every year. Like I've probably, I don't know, seen it five to 10 times and I pretty much send it to all my clients at some point because mm -hmm. when we're stuck, but usually why I send it to people is when they're going through something really, really difficult whether it be a divorce or change in money situation or health challenge or uh, just some big challenge. When, when we can start to look at ourself as the hero of our own journey rather than the victim, mm -hmm. you know, and that, and that there's actually the, the pathway that the hero takes, there's like three, um, you know, I made some notes today, but there's, there's three, um, Oh, that's the wrong notes. Uh, there's three aspects to the hero's journey and that everybody can recognize, you know, within their own story. Mm -hmm. And so um, in this movie, if you want to watch it, I'll link it below. But in this movie, we'll start with the Buddha. You want to share the Buddha story 
is in Thailand. Uh, they start the movie with this, but I'll just uh, share a brief version of it. So in Thailand years ago, there was a, a monastery with a golden Buddha, very famous, huge golden Buddha. And the town found out that they were going to be invaded. Um, you know, in a few days, uh, there was some boats coming to invade them. And so the, the monks decided to cover the Buddha with cement and mud so that they wouldn't, otherwise they would take the Buddha tip for the gold. So they covered it with cement and mud. And sure enough, the soldiers came in from the, the other country and they occupied the, the town and, the, and in Thailand for many years to come, but they never bothered the monastery because they didn't see the golden Buddha. And enough time went past a few generations where they forgot that there was even a gold, everybody forgot. And there was a, a monk meditating on, you know, Buddha's lap one day, because it was very big. And when he got off, uh, a chip fell off and he saw gold underneath. So he went running to the other monks and said, oh my gosh, there's gold underneath the, the Buddha. And they all came out and got their axes and picks and start chipping away. And there it was, the golden Buddha was there again. And it's a metaphor for our lives that we're born golden. We're born pure. And we're born connected to our true nature, the pure love. And then we get conditioned. We get by our society and our parents. And this is what you do if you're black. And this is what you think if you're a woman and uh, what you think if you're a man. And, and you get all these conditions and you get this armor, this cement that's put around you. And that's in the, in the hero's journey is called um, separation. So you start living a, as, as this separate you know, separate being, and you, you get used to life in one way and you forget your golden within. And then something happens. The initiation is the next stage. Something happens where you get a chink in the armor. So again, it could be a divorce. Uh, something happens in the world, something where your belief systems are rocked and you see a little piece of gold and you realize your golden within. And then after that, you're never the same. And then really you're only interested after that in slowly chipping away the armor the rest of your life, because that's what's most interesting is what you find within and that superpower, that golden that you find within. And that's the third step, the return. Right? Is the return, you go back to tell your story. So, so you have your separation where you, you have a, a way of thinking and a way of being your family, you live in closed and then you leave as some, whether you go to college or move to another town or get married, and then that's the initiation. You have difficult challenges that are just for you, and then you come through the challenges, and usually there's several challenges, you know, everybody knows. And if you look at your life like that, that you go through these challenges that like they're initiation, and it, it helps you separate yourself, and it also helps. There's many different things you can help to awaken the different qualities within of the archetypes. That's why we love superheroes so much and, and the archetypes of the mythological, um, you know, all the stories and even, you know, even now we worship, you know, musicians and singers because they have the qualities that we want within ourselves, confidence and brightness and, you know, expansiveness, abundance kind of thing, whatever it is. And then they help to awaken those qualities within you. And it and it it's wonderful to look at, you know, when you watch that movie, that when everything's described and if you set and wrote your own story of your life, your you know, you mentioned victim. Well, there's a victim and there's a villain and there's, you know, the the god or the goddess and there's the, always the hero at the end, you know? And that's the whole point is that you are you're writing your story. You're, 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 you're the one, you're the, the character. Yeah. You're yes. the protagonist. You're the hero of your own journey. So don't and, you want to be the superhero? Yeah, exactly. And that happens because a lot of people, when they come to us, they might be in victim mode. Mm -hmm. And when you're in victim mode, it's when you blame the situations, the circumstances, the situation and things, rather than taking 100% responsibility when you're become the hero and even the superhero of your own journey. It's you taking responsibility for absolutely everything that happens to you. And I'm talking everything, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. just the things that you don't like to happen or the circumstances. It's like, like I, you know, I like to tell people 
even when I was robbed, I had um, my, uh, I mean, robbed, I had my car, I had a lot of stuff. I had my massage table and all my CDs stolen out of my car, my little tracker, remember my little geo tracker um, years ago when I didn't really have the money to replace all my CDs and my massage table, but I didn't, I wasn't a victim. I actually, I right away, I said, I guess they needed it more than I did, you know, and that's the level we're talking about. That's how to be, go from a hero to the super being a superhero is you're not a victim. Yeah. And I I feel like that's, that's when we use the term awakening, like awakening to something within there's something rising, right? It's like, there's a shifting. Yeah. You're shifting from victim to hero to taking responsibility to not being thrown around like a pinball, even though we do get thrown around like a pinball, but then not, feeling and and plenty of people are in victim mode and there's nothing wrong with that until you until you feel empowered enough and get beaten down enough to then to rise up and it's hard and it's hard to watch in other people and we've all been been there we've absolutely been in victim mode before Mm -hmm. and and then we've been empowered before too and we see other people in it and we have to have compassion for ourselves and for others but it it really is you know, there's, and there's a lot of different ways that we can be the hero. I was thinking when we were today about, you know, I love that we started off, which we didn't plan on starting off with your ski story, which is so um, immediate and fresh and, and true. And, uh, you know, I get my students ask me questions like that all the time too. And I, and I always laugh and I'm like, oh my gosh, yes. How do you think I'm so good at teaching this? And I can articulate it so well, like I've been through it. Yeah. I have so been through it for me, but with, it was- but with that experience there, there comes a lot of, you know, courage and then clarity. And there's so much more going on beneath just that incident. You know, there's so much more going on in there that, uh, yeah, it, you can't explain it to anybody else. Cause they're not having your experience. Yeah. You only have your own experience. You That's know? right. So you can read about it and read about Joseph's Campbell. And then you see it in other stories in every Disney film and every book you've ever read, everything you see the, 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 you see the separation, the initiation and the return in star Wars in wizard of Oz in the matrix. I mean, it's all there and it's in your own life too. And I like what you said before about writing down you know, maybe some, because I've had many different cycles of the hero's <laughs> journey in my life. Yep, so I think about I. us both moving to Nashville. That was definitely, I mean, both of us moving, you moving from Newfoundland, not even knowing where Vancouver was. No, yeah, never knew. Just when you were, no, eight, what, 18 or something? Yeah. 19? Yeah. 19. Yeah. So that's the separation yeah. part. Yeah. And of course, as you get older and you get 50, 60, you start, you know, your experiences keep mounting, you know, there's more and more and more. And there's, um, there, there is often, uh, people always think, well, does the victim fall away? Well, that just depends on, on you. That depends on your experience, depends on your you know, moving into your authentic self, your true nature, the, you know, just the. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, like I was saying, it's like everybody's bottom is different. And, and just because you become a hero in one area doesn't mean you're victim, not victim in another area. Right. right? So, Mm -hmm. so it, it typically we all, the way I've seen it work and it's worked in my life, I think it's like, I'll have one area where I'm really strong in and where I see things, I'm self-empowered. I find the superhero within quite easily. I go through challenges and I can, you know, bounce back quite easily. And then I had other areas where I was quite weak. So my weak area was love. Like I was addicted to, you know, romance and love and finding, you know, the one. And so because of that, I found not the one many, many, many times, wrote a lot of great songs about it, but had a lot of broken hearts. And so I went through a lot of heartbreak with that. And, but because I was strong in other areas of my life, like for instance, moving to Nashville and being an illegal alien and living and figuring out how to work 
and how to make money and how to open a bank account and then getting my green card, all that, like that was, I was already acting as a superhero in that way at the very young age. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, because I'd lived in Australia the year before that, you know, doing that. So, so that gave me the muscle. Cause I feel like it's like a muscle, you know? So when you, but, but we're kind of blind to our own stuff. You know, that mirror, when the mirror is so close to your face, you can't see it. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it takes friends or coaches or whatever family to point, point out, will you do that really well? Do you think you could do that in this other part of your life too? Yeah. You're like, when you went off to Australia, you were like Harrison Ford, you know? <laughs> Def, I definitely Adventure. felt like, yeah, yeah, the, the Indiana Jones yeah. leaving, leaving uh, for Australia when I was 22 and going to sing there for a year by myself, getting on the plane all by myself to mm -hmm. Australia and not knowing where I was going to live, moving in with seven other people and then losing our contract. You know, I lost the contracts. I was supposed to sing over there and the, the guy lost his contract and my dad sent me $500 and said, yeah, I mean stay there. It's like a book. It's like reading a book, right? Your, we all have our, our books. Yeah. Yes. Our lives are like reading a book and some, you know, there's an adventure. Some it's more romantic. Some it's you know, working. Yeah. You're working or raising families or coming yeah. from a depression or, you know, there's so much working you know? through illness. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't have to be big and huge. That's what they they say in the in the film too. I like that. It doesn't have to be like you move to Australia or something like that. It doesn't have to be you become yeah. famous or write a book or whatever. It, it's it's finding you, you, the hero, your own superhero in your own life. Yeah, the gold, the gold within. The gold and within. Yeah, knocking away the debris like they did off the Buddha and of generations, right? Gen and then there it is. There's that. That brilliance right there, it's within, it's within us all. And it's every day, what we might think is mundane, it's not. It's actually, it could be a life-changing, transformational time. So, you know, it's just awareness. Yeah. Awareness. Yeah, yeah it's getting to know yourself. Mm -hmm. And, and I feel like that's the big one, though, getting to know yourself, seeing where the aches and pains are. And knowing that the aches and pains are like cracks in the armor. Once you start, that's how you get from victim mode. If you're, in, if you're listening to this and you feel like you're in victim mode, which means basically you feel powerless, mm -hmm. you might feel hopeless. And it might just be in one situation or many situations in your life. You feel weak. You don't feel empowered. Mm -hmm. um, you can't see a way out. You know, it's like, where do you start? Yeah. You start where Eddie started when she was going to take off her boots is just take a moment and breathe and look around mm -hmm. and be present to where you are. Sight, sound, touch, taste, smell, not in your head with your fears mm -hmm. or with your doubts or with your hopelessness or with your, you know, all these feelings of how can I, it's not, it's not up to you. You don't have to figure out your life in that moment. You don't have to figure out how to get out of the hole in that moment. You yes. just have to stand up. Yes. And if Colleen wasn't there or if, you know, I was in a really intense moment, I we're not alone. We're not alone. I could have sat on the snowbank and I can guarantee you someone was going to come along and go, you all right? You, you need help? You know, and it could be taking my boots off or it could be, yeah, get me down this mountain. Can you, or, you know, or it could, who knows? It could be somebody coming in with the wisest words. It could be the Buddha. You know, it's, it's, it just that day. It was great. It was Colleen. You it just need to you. Yeah. You just need to know the next clear step. It's like mm -hmm. what happens, what I see with people is like for you, okay, so we'll use you as a metaphor. Hopefully you don't mind. We keep going back to your story. Um, but if if you would have sat there and been stuck in your story, that would have been the situation where you would have taken off your boots, walked up, because you're like, I'm done with this. I've You yep. made the decision, you know, and then you're probably thinking about all, all, just thinking ahead, not really, you're just, yeah, giving up sort of thing. And that's what tends to happen with people. They think a hundred steps beyond which is not where we're supposed to be. So there's another great little monk story that I have 
of these monks in training, they this they each get dropped off one at a time on this little island that's like a few kilometers long, and they get dropped off by their teacher at like midnight in the helicopter, and all they've got is a lamp that all they can see is their feet. Mm. So the the monk gets dropped off, and he and this teacher says, "Okay, so just you make your way to one end of the island, and we'll find you by morning. You know, you've got you know find another five hours of darkness." And this monk, the, the trainee says, well, but all I can see is my feet. And he goes, all you need to do is see the next step in front of you. That's all you need. That's right. That's all we ever need is see the next. And that's all. The, when we think we can plan 10 steps, it's all in the head anyway, because even if you've got your calendar set or your game plan sent or your business plan, things always change. So really only the next step is all we know for sure. Yes. So that's how I would say. Yeah. Cause it, cause it, when we go into future thinking, mm-hmm. we're going into a lot of times fear or worry mode or what if, or, and, but we're not even there yet. We haven't even taken the next step. It's like same on the mountain, right? It's like, how do you, how do you get down the mountain? One, one step at a, at a time. time. That's it. Yeah. So that's how we did, did it. And yeah. How do you get down the next round? Well, it's a lot easier because you now you know the path and you know, yeah. that's life is kind of like that. You know, it's all, it's all, any situation you can think of is like that. It's kind of like when I was in Australia and you know, there I was, I had found a place to live with these other Canadians and then lost the contract. And all of a sudden I had no job, no money coming in. And, and I didn't need to know the next 10 steps. All well, my dad said, just stay around he sent five hundred dollars stay around for two weeks and i'm sure there'll be a they'll, they'll need a singer as soon as the expo opens so i just needed to know that next step yes. so that's what we have to do is just because the hopelessness happens when we are trying to take on figure out our whole life yes and fear steps in and paralyzes us yeah you know it freezes us in that moment and okay recognize that then and then face that well, facing it and asking, is it true? Yes. Is it That's true? another technique is, is, okay, I'm thinking about 10 steps ahead of what my life's going to be like in a month and all the things I have to do. Well, do I need, can I do any of that right now? And asking, that's what the self-inquiry is about, is do I, you know, all these fears that are coming, are they true? Are they valid? Yeah. That's how you find the superhero within is being present in the moment. Mm-hmm. taking responsibility. If you're in victim or hopelessness mode, we get it. We have been there. It's yeah. part of it. It's part of our journey is we have to feel hopeless and helpless and destitute and alone and fearful. And, you know, all of that, every person I know that I've coached and all my friends and myself included, we have all been there. And the thing is, is that when we push through it, as you said, so beautifully, you were so proud of yourself. Oh, absolutely. And you know, it's fearful or challenging in in the beginning, and it's messy in the middle, and then you find the gold and it's glorious, right? It's like, that's the return. That's the, the, the steps, the beliefs, and then you're initiating and then you're whatever those things are, and you're returning to who your true nature is, right? It that's, that's, that's all we can do. That's all we can ask of ourselves day to day is what are my superpowers? What, you know, like you might not even know. We might not even know. So we, some people will say, I don't have any. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because there's a whole book in you. There's a whole book. Everybody has a book in them. You've got that. You've got all these archetypes and all these uh, elements about yourself that, that are brilliant. And, the love, right? The, the challenges, the courage, the, you know, just think on some of the things you've already pushed through in your life, you know, having kids or having an orphanage or grandchildren or traveling and fear and, and the unknown and, and all the things, the things that go bump in the night. (laughs) Yeah. All the things we face as being human and yeah. yeah. And, and that's, um, that's the other thing, you know, that I, that I, that I touched on earlier is what a technique that Deepak Chopra gave us years ago, he was in this 
in this, in this. And he, I loved, okay. I took his, um, his quote here. He says, if you speak to somebody at the level of the mind, then you'll speak to their mind. If you speak to somebody at the level of your heart, you'll speak to their heart. But if you speak through your life, your life then is your story and you'll, and that will change lives. And that's what the mythological stories are doing for us is that we see these stories, whether it's the matrix or the wizard of Oz or whatever, you know, book or for, I loved gone with the wind of course, romance and love. That was my thing, right? Unrequited love. That was my life story. And so, um, and so you take a look at that and you see yourself as that archetype. So again, you're taking a step back from being the poor me thing. If you're in that, like not knowing how to get out of it and you see yourself as that archetype and then how did they get out of it? And then you awaken the qualities within you. Deepak, uh, on a retreat years ago, he said, he gave us the job. He said, you pick three. I think I told you this years ago too. You pick three female and three male archetypes. They can be any uh, religious, mythological, even cartoon or, or from mythology, Greek, Christian, Irish, you know, whatever it is that works for you. Three that you're drawn to of each. And then write down the qualities that they embody. Because all of the archetypes embody, you know, for Jesus embodies compassion yeah. and forgiveness mm -hmm. and unconditional love. He became one of my archetypes eventually. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there were Ganesha was one of my archetypes. That's the elephant God. And he is playful and witty and smart mm -hmm. and, um, and creative and, and, um, tricky, you know, like it comes up with creative solutions. Right. But he has a lot of power from his mother and father, the Lord and goddess of the universe. So he says, you write down these qualities pick three males. And I invite you guys to do this. If you're listening to this, um, three male and three female, and if you only one of each comes to you, let them come to you over time and write them down and write the qualities. And then you can get objects. You can study them and help awaken those qualities within you. So I had these bracelets I used to wear that were my Durga bracelets. So Durga, who is like, she's like the, the goddess of the destruction of the ego and the power, like every time I'd feel puny as a woman or something, I'd feel puny. I'd put my Durga bracelets on and I would feel empowered. And so then you can use those qualities to help awaken those qualities that are already within us. And in this Finding Joe movie, they do talk about that as well. Yes. And there's so many. There's Mother Mary and there's Celtic women, you know, Bridget. And there's so many. There's so many. And you're naturally drawn to them already. Yes. And, you know, when you were talking, I thought about the book I read when I was young, and it was called The Valley of Horses, and Jane Eyre wrote it. Well, I was that writer. I was that person in that book. I mean, I thought I could ride horses. That's where it came from, Crin. Yeah. <laughs> when I told you I could ride horses, I thought I was that character. <laughs> yeah, we went on a horse riding adventure, and Crin said, do you know how to ride horses, Eddie? I'm like, yeah. Yes, I can ride horses. No, I can't ride horses. So for my 50th, she uh, got us some horses. horses to go out on a ranch in the middle of Tennessee somewhere and ride unlimited woods. And um, my horse was for an experienced rider because Eddie said she could ride. <laughs> and so, so we traded there was horses another after a bit. ski trip right there. But I did it. You did it. You didn't I want did. to. You're like, didn't you got to, off and you didn't want horse, to get back on. That, and hor that horse took off. We got her stopped. Very well, I scary. didn't stop her, but it was very scary. I didn't fall off. I held on just like the gal in Valley of the Horses. And we made it back. And then I was like, I'm, that's, I'm done. I'm off the horse. And we're, we're in the forest still. You're like, I don't want to get back on. I'm like, Eddie will trade horses. My, my horse is so good. And he was. He was really great. And I got on Crin's horse and then Crin got on the wild. And I was like, woohoo, this is a fun horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And her horse was the fun horse for me. See? Yeah. See how, how beautiful those stories in our lives. And, and we have pictures. My God, if we ever did a video, right, of, of our life, it's like, yeah. So find that superhero. You know, when I look back, I laugh now because I – Wow, I've been a superhero a lot, skiing on a horse, on a boat, 
We had a whale breach next to the boat. Like, wow. Well, but it's not just that too. It's like you, you also got, got a divorce after yeah. 23 years of marriage. That's being a superhero. You yes. also have been self-employed your entire life and Pretty have much. two PhDs. Well, That's yeah, it's been superhero busy. shit. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 almost surreal, right? You reach this point in the, in our in our life here now at sixty and go, wow, take inventory, right? And 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 just go, wow, this is a great book. I want to keep writing this book, and I want to, you know, really continue with these beautiful, powerful, awakened, authentic, real, true yumminess. You know, I, I, this is how I, I want to continue because the, the more awake we become, the more we check in with our own truth, the realer it is, the more authentic we become. And then, you know, you're an open book. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. You're an open book. You're standing in your true nature. Cause I can't tell you how many people I talk to every day that are like, what does it mean to be your authentic self? Ralph Waldo Emerson said, to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to change you is your greatest accomplishment. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. So and this is and philosophy, there's a lot of truth there. Yeah. That's so beautiful. Yeah. So, so take stock, look at your life. And if you have any, you know, fears, they're, they're just, they're there to help crack you open, to help you to see, to, to ch chip off another piece of that armor, to, to em fully embody the gold within. And enjoy the challenges in your life. You know, when just look at it, if you're watching a movie, if there's nothing that excites you or gets your attention or inspires you, it's dull. <laughs> yeah. I tell people all the time, they're like people that are so interested in psychics and astrology and everything. I'm like, if you read a book and you go to the end, it's ruined. If you go see a movie, you don't want to go see it again. It's not as enjoyable. Yeah. It's yeah. like, why do you think you want to know? You don't want to know. Yeah. So just embrace the journey it's and the, the journey. curiosity. It's What's that? My, my 88 year old mother said yesterday, you know, I just read something that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I'm like, what's that now, Mama, my little Buddha woman? What is that now you're getting? She said, it's not the journey, it's the destination. <laughs> what do you mean it's not the destination, it's the journey? Yes. It's what not the I destination, say? it's the journey. You said it's not the journey, it, it's not the journey, it's the destination. It's the opposite. No, no, it's no, no, it's not the destination, it's the journey. The journey, exactly. You said yeah. the opposite. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. Anyway, I was quoting my mother. Maybe she did said you think it she opposite. said it opposite? Could could have been no, since she she's getting ready to get to her destination. <laughs> I know she said it correct, but she's and I'm thinking, yeah, I read that like about 45 years ago somewhere. You know what I mean? It's like, we get it when we get it. And, and like, it comes yeah. in layers too. It's like, you yeah. know, follow your bliss has been my saying. I've had that on the back of every car I've had for the last 30 years, like all four cars that I've had, I usually get a new car every 10 years or so. And um, I've had follow your bliss. It's like been my saying. It's on the bottom of every email that I have. And it's Joseph Campbell, and it's actually the Upanishads. It comes from the Hindu uh, Upanishads. Ah. Follow your bliss. And then it kind of got misconstrued. What's that? Old an ancient ancient writings. Ancient writings, yeah. And the definition of bliss has been sort of misconstrued, as is happiness. It's like bliss is to be happy without any outside circumstances. And there's a peace to it. It's not just happiness and joy. It's like peacefulness it's contentedness that's what bliss is for me and the a traditional i think definition of it mm -hmm. yeah it's good it's not I, some ecstatic I, state no no i i feel very content in my life right now today in this moment and that can come in waves too oh yeah well I, when i was on skis first day in Lake Louise, I couldn't say I was contented at this time in my life, right in this moment. I wasn't yeah. I was in 
fear mode. But today, this is all that matters. This is why we stay in this moment. Yeah. Enjoy. Well, this moment, there's only, there's no way we can ever get out of the present moment, except for in our heads, we sure do try. Yeah. But it's always now. Yeah. It's always now. And now it's now again. Like it's always now. And it's so wild how we're not living in now, like we are, our bodies are, because we have, your bodies don't have a time machine, but we're mm -hmm. constantly in the future and in the past, right? Mm -hmm. But that's where that, the hero's journey can begin is it being here now and finding that, that peace that's always here now. Even when you're in the midst, like, I just want to say one more thing here. Like you were saying, you didn't feel that contentedness when you were on the mountain. And I must well, say in that moment in that moment, in that moment. No, yeah. I get it. it but was what's there. happened. What's yeah. that? It was in there because the gold is always in there, but the gold is always in there, but you're not aware of it. And that's been the journey for me is I've certainly had many, many times in my life where I've been totally overrun by emotions and not even clear, not seeing any or feeling any peace or gold or anything or bliss or anything. But now in my life, what's happened is even when I'm upset, even when I was driving in Sicily and had, and, and at dusk and had to stick shift and the, and the, and the five lanes of traffic and no, no lanes actually, even then there was a peace within, even underneath the anxiousness mm -hmm. was a total peace. Yeah. And that is so awesome. And that's, everybody has that. We all have it. Yep. That's we just get overridden. That's a, that's that is a superpower. Yeah. And everybody has it. You can't not have it. It's always there for you. It's always available, but it just gets overshadowed. The hurricane and the storm of the present moment overshadows the blue sky of the bliss and the awareness until you kind of get a big enough aperture where you're aware of that peaceful contentedness all the time, even in the midst of the chaos. That's what awakening is. Mm -hmm. Awakening to your true nature is your Buddha nature. Also, I'll tell another, I love, I love teaching in parables and metaphors <laughs> and stories. So there's another uh, story about another Buddha <laughs> it could be a priest. I don't know. We could do the same thing, but it's always happens to be a, a monk um, who uh, had this, lived in a monastery and had all these students and he got word that his son died. And so he was in his room, shut his door and he was wailing, crying for two weeks. And his students were all so mystified because here they thought that he was above all the human feelings so like why would he be so upset that his son died i thought he was the buddha and could be peaceful all the time and um when he finally came out two weeks later he came out looking peaceful and they said teacher why why were you crying and he goes because my son died you know we're still human and and if probably if we would have inquired and been there to ask him did he still feel the peace even while he was wailing crying he would have said yes Mm -hmm. yes beautiful yeah beautiful yeah so we're not trying to be this being super he our own superhero isn't becoming unhuman it's becoming fully human yeah it's within it is within yeah, it's beautiful. I'm I'm so glad we picked this topic today. Oh, you, well, I was so excited when I read it because this is like one of my, as you can tell, this is one of my I favorite know. topics. <laughs> I know. It's great. It's great. I love it. I love it too. I yeah. It. Thank you for coming up with it, Ed. Uh, I, I just loved it. I, there's so many things, you know, if you go back and look at your life, you can see how you move through it you know we've always we're always those ages that we've been and there was peace in all that there was contentment you know even amidst all the chaos it's 
it's been present. And it's always a, present. It's just not an awareness that it's there. Right. That's right. Well, until there is. Until there is. Until and there you is. can't force it. Mm -mm. it happens you can make happens. yourself more available by doing all the stuff that we talked about today. You got a lot of tools today, everybody. Yeah. All the tools that Eddie and I use ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and life happens, you know, we're, we're, this is it. We're human beings. Yeah. Here on this, all in this journey together, none of us are getting out of here alive. Nope. Nope. Some of our books are the sound the same, but there's different characters. There's different experiences. <laughs> yeah. Every single one of us has a different experience on the planet. I don't know your experience at all. You don't know mine. You don't know the person you're closest to in the world. You don't even know their experience. Everybody's having a unique experience. It's pretty miraculous. It is, isn't it? That, that it, just everything about it from the physical presentation to the emotional, to the spiritual, to the structural, to everything, right? There's so much. And yet we all have more in common Mm -hmm. with each other then we have differences yeah so we're all having this different experience but we all have, we're all on the planet together at the same time in 2024 yeah. even if somebody's in afghanistan or china or wherever they are we're all on the planet right now having similar experiences every human being wants happiness and love and connection and so we have like more common and just like the book my book's no better than your book my book is on the bestseller list. So is yours. Yeah. There we all have a book it. within us. We all have a book within us. Yeah. And the book is for you. The book is for you yeah. to, you know, because I know from what writing my been working on a memoir for a while and it stops and starts And it. I just love the, I don't think about ever releasing it. I mean, once in a while, my mind will be like, will I ever release this? And I don't care. Like it's been such a beautiful process Mm. of just I, I could, remembering things that I never knew were even there in my memory yeah. and writing about it and seeing being able to really see where I am today as a result of all those different experiences mm -hmm. and so yeah I highly recommend you doing that and it has nothing to do with you wanting to be an author and to publish it's just even to share with your family to friends or just for you yeah that's why even journaling is so beautiful to me. Yeah. You know, you go back and read some of your journals or your gratitude journals or, you know, you go back 10 years and you read it. It's like someone else wrote it. Yeah. Did you ever go back and read some of your stuff. I'm like, oh, my God, I was a really good writer. I can't believe I wrote that. Even when I read like published articles from years ago, say when my daughter, who's 30 now, was like a baby and I wrote about, you know, colds and flus and what to do for kids and and I read what I wrote and I'm going, gosh, that could have been somebody different wrote that. Yeah. But nope, my name's on that. I wrote it. Yeah. And yet some writings you read that people can hear you through it. I remember Colleen said to me, I'd sent her a text or something and I put these funny words and spelled them wrong. And she said, I could hear you saying it. It made me laugh out loud. It's great. Just by how we write, you know? Yeah, it's such a beautiful expression of ourselves. And yeah, and there's another superpower for people. Yeah, you have I, I invite you to find oh, yours to, to add, you know, you've got you definitely have them. And hopefully some of our examples today will help you to find your superpowers within because that's why we do this. You know, Eddie and I just we do love talking and we love sharing, but hopefully you it's helping you expanding your um you know, just your awareness of how you're living and give yourself a pat on the back and, and, and maybe draw a cartoon of yourself with a little superhero <laughs> on the back. I know little wings. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. This is great. Great yeah. conversation. Yeah. yeah. It was fun, Ed. Thank you so much. It was Thank good. You. Thank you everyone for listening. Hope you get a lot out of this. This was fun. Mm. See you next time. Be real.